Live from Lake Orion High School, the NFHS Network is proud to present Varsity Boys Basketball as the Lake Orion Dragons host the Birmingham Grove Falcons. Hello everybody, I'm Jack Hagerberg along with my partner Derek Steele. Derek Steele, how are we doing tonight? Tell me about this Grove's uh, basketball team. Well Grove's, they had a heartbreaking loss to Troy at Troy Tuesday night. One of the best teams in the OAA White at home. We're playing for the OAA White folks. When Lake Orion's get a share with Bloomfield Hills, who's playing at Stony Creek tonight. Win, plus a Bloomfield Hills loss is an outright win for the Dragons. Groves, if they win, Lake Orion loses, and Bloomfield Hills loses, they're guaranteed a share, a three-way share of the OAA White. So we're playing for league championships, we're playing for bragging rights, but looking specifically at the Groves, they're gonna be they're gonna be a good guard team. You gotta stop the guards if you're the Dragons. They got really two two really good guards. And number one, the senior Aaron Dubose, and number 13, the senior Ben Roman. It hurts them that Lurts, number two Nick Lurts, is out tonight. But they're gonna be a really good guard team. And then they need to just overcome missing Lurts. He's one of their best players. He can play everywhere for them. And a huge game against the Dragons in Groves in their win. So it's gonna be a good one for Birmingham Groves. It's gonna be a great game tonight. Yes, it is. And for this Lake Orient team, Nate Harvilla, he is going to be the story of tonight. Can he make up for Malachi Granberry being gone? Can he prove himself to be the guard we know he can be? Not only is this important for the whole team, but it's important for him. If he can do this, this gives him his starting spot next year. He needs to prove, he needs to step up. This is the moment that everybody waits for. They wait for their opportunity, and he needs to take advantage of it. Second, but, uh, go ahead. Not only that, Alden Ritt, their star star uh, senior. He needs to take advantage of this opportunity. He needs to play out of his minds. They need to just have a great game overall today and that's just what's going to get them this win. That's what's going to get them the uh, district title. One a really good quote I've written down from former Lake Orion head coach Jerome Schroeder. He said great teams are great because everyone keeps each other accountable. One of the biggest storylines for the Dragons is that loss to Bloomfield Hills on Tuesday night. The 52 to 50 loss. How are they going to be able to overcome that loss? And how are they going to be able to come and beat a really good Groves team who beat them by double digits earlier this year in Birmingham? It's going to be a great game. Doing the tip-off for Groves, number 22, Quinn Steele, and number 5, Alden Ritt for Lake Orion. Ball go Groves away. It's one of the first tips I've seen Ritt lose this year. He's been pretty good on the tips. DeBose dribbling the ball, passes it to... Roman passes it to Steele. Steele drives in. Kicks it back out. Back to DeBose. DeBose. Passes the ball out to Roman. Roman passes the ball to Williams. Williams back with it. DeBose. Dribbling around. Passes to Steele. Steele on the outside. Drives in. Passes it back to DeBose. DeBose driving in. Kicks it back out. Drives in. They're going to call a foul. One of the biggest things that hurt the Dragons in Birmingham this earlier this year is they're giving up easy shot to the Falcons. I really like what they did. They really did good with the screens, switching through the screens, helping each other. They're going to be a really defense by committee. They don't got that player that's just going to be that lockdown defender from them. So that was a really good play for them. Absolutely. Student section going crazy, trying to distract the Bose. Puts up a shot and won't go. Too short. Student section's alive tonight. Probably the biggest student section we've seen all year. The Bose for a second shot. Won't go again, short. Rebound CJ Witt. Witt passes to Harvilla. He's gotta prove himself tonight. Harvilla out to Ritt. Ritt out to CJ. CJ back to Harvilla. Go, back to CJ. CJ to Alden. Alden dribbling around, back to CJ. Back to Ritt, trying to establish the offense. Ritt back out to CJ. CJ to Havrilla. Havrilla drives in, pass back out to Alden Ritt. Ritt drives in, spin. And almost had it. 
Rebound steal on a fast break. Passes to Roman. Roman out to Williams. Williams drives in. Steal. Puts up the shot. Won't go either. Rebound, Havrilla. Passes out to CJ Witt. CJ Witt down in the bucket. Goes in. And is fouled. Good take there by Witt. Witt's going to play a lot of that forward spot for you. I have him listed as a shooting guard and small forward on my roster. He's going to play a lot of those heavy minutes, getting down in the paint and getting those getting those shots to fall for the Dragons. Good play there by CJ him. CJ first shot, and it's good. Dragons take the first point of the game with a 1-0 lead. CJ's second shot. Up. Oh. And it'll also go. 2-0 Dragons. Roman dribbles the ball up court. It was good to see Witt hit both of those free throws there on that trip. That's what killed Witt them against both. the Blackhawks on Tuesday is not being able to hit key free throws. DeBose out to Roman. Roman, too short again. Rebound DeBose. DeBose drives in. Out to Siren. Siren puts up a shot. Won't go either. Rebound Trevor Witt. Herrera passes the ball deep. Alden Ritt puts up the three. Just short. Out of bounds on CJ. Going Groves way. Inbound like, to Debose. So. I like to see it. Having Alden Ritt, your best defender, guarding the best ball handler for the Falcons and Dubose. That's going to be a fun matchup all night to see who constantly wins that matchup. So far, I've, I have to give it to Ritt. Steal down low against Trevor Witt. Great defense by Trevor. Great defense causing a travel. That's what something the student section is getting on their feet about. I love that. What a show of defense by Trevor Witt right there. That's what's going to get Whip more minutes. Sorry, Trevor Whip more minutes is being tough on defense, not letting those easy shots. And Absolutely. that's he did great there. I really love passing to CJ Whip. Out to Liddell. Liddell to Ritt. Ritt passes it down low. Oh, it's blocked by Steele. Liddell down low, and they're going to call a foul on Strand. Way go up tough by Liddell. I remember earlier in the year talking about Liddell, talking about he needs to get more physical. He needs to be that big man that the Dragons need. He needs to have a big breakout year in his second year on varsity. He's done that just that. He's had a huge improvement for the Dragons so far this year. He had a great game against Holly. Liddell, first shot. Will go in after bouncing around the rim. He had a great game against Bluefield Hills on Tuesday. Had a good game against Troy Friday. He's just... For Seems the last like up. month or two, he's done great for the Dragons. Second shot. That'll also go. 4-0 to zero lead for the Dragons. Steel inbounds to DeBose. Not many substitutes yet in this game. Out to Roman. Roman to Steel. Steel going against Trevor again. Puts up the shot. Won't go e either. Rebound Liddell. Thought that one might have gone in after. That looked like it was going to take a lucky bounce there. Everell, oh, loses the ball off his feet. DeBose grabs it. Fast break. Puts up the shot. And that's good for DeBose's first point and Grove's first points. Everell passes out to Liddell. Liddell to Trevor. Trevor back to Harvilla. Liddell down deep. Ooh, gets blocked by 22 steal. That's what I'm talking about with Liddell there. It's just his physicality and being able to bring it into the post. That's probably what I've seen him improve Both on the most. Air balls the three. Air balls. Student section is loving it. Ritt fumbles the pass, manages to recover. Doesn't get the shot, though. Williams pass. Oh, he also drops it, and it will go out of bounds. Lake Orion ball. I think the winner of this game is going to be the winner. With this is going to sound really cliche. It's going to be the team with less errors. Think about it, though. Dragons have a chance to capitalize off of turnover. The only two points the Falcons have is off of a Havrilla turnover. Yeah, those points they missed right there. Havrilla dribbling against DeVos. Out to Ritt. Ritt pumps fake. 
Trevor. Back out to Ritt. Ritt trying to control the offense. Passes it to CJ. Gross. CJ going. Groves fan section wanted to travel there on Ritt when he went down into the post. He can go either way. Ritt, deep NBA range three, and it is nothing but net. What a shot from Alden. What a shot. Showing why he's going to Grand Valley State next yeah. winter. He's Showing excited. off that college range right now. He is excited with the student section. Roman answers right back though with three of his own. Harvilla goes past him, goes in, passes out to CJ. CJ puts up the shot, and just a little too strong. Manages to miss his own rebound. Back to Roman. Roman dribbling the ball up. Ritt tries to intercept it. DeVos catches it, though. Bring it in. Puts up the halfway shot. Won't go. Williams, oh, destroyed by Alden. That cut the student section on their feet. Absolutely they, they've come in numbers rejected. tonight. This is probably the biggest student section we've seen all year, and it's only going to get bigger as the team keeps winning. Absolutely. What a play by Alden. Expecting a huge student section next week as the Dragons travel to Romeo. Got the number one seed in districts. Got to show out. 21. Oh, throws it off Alden. That 21. Was Kevin Tobe funny. comes into the game for Alden the Dragons. Alden loves it. He loves it. Devos passes out to number four, Jack Abbott. Abbott going against Tobe. What a time to Abbott be fan steal. of the Dragons right now, though. Steel trying to jump around Trevor. Oh, nothing but net for Steel. Vidal passes to CJ. CJ dribbling up the court. CJ dribbling around. Passes to Ritt. Ritt against Steel. Drives in. Puts up a shot. We're going to call a foul on Steele on the court. That was Steele's first. But going back to my point, man, what a time it's to be a fan of the Dragons. The Lady Dragons getting a huge upset win against Stony Creek. Boys team playing absolutely phenomenal right now. Hockey, unfortunately, lost right now. I mean, going against the powerhouse of CC is not much we can hope for. As Ritt dribbles around, trying to get rid of Roman, puts up the three. Boom! Nothing but net. Two threes by Alden Ritt. Gives a kiss to the student section there on his way back on defense. Absolutely. The boast dribbling up the court. A little confusion on the Dragons defense as Hardway goes to guard. The boast drives in. A little reverse doesn't work though. Rebound Tobe. Tobe coming up the court. Ritt tries to get rid of steal. Puts up the third three. Oh, just a little, a little light. Hardway goes to help him up as he gets, as Hardway, Harvilla subs out Alden Ritt for a little break. Ritt wanted a foul there. Looks like he didn't have any room to land on his shot. Harvilla now guarding DeBose. Giving their star players some rest, I'm assuming. Tobe playing defense. Harvilla going against DeBose. DeBose passes out to Roman. Roman puts up a three. And that will be nothing but not two for Roman. Seems like one of the sharp shooters on this Grove team. Avril driving up the court, gives it to Tobe. Tobe back to Avril. Yeah, going back to Roman though, I normally start probably three or four players for the opposing Hardware. team. It's always gonna be the key players to watch out for. One of the ones tonight for me is Ben Roman. He's a sharpshooter. He can shoot from anywhere on the court. He's someone you got to watch out for if you're the Dragons. Got to watch out for everybody, especially those guys, though. Havrillo drives in, back out to Liddell, puts up the shot, won't go. Rebound Tobe, puts it back up. Oh, just misses. And after the quarter, it's Lake Orion 10 and Groves 10. We will be right back after this short break. If you are a student athlete in Michigan with at least a 3.5 GPA, you can apply for the MHSA Scholar Athlete Award. Each year, in partnership with Farm Bureau Insurance, 32 seniors are selected. And this year, each student will receive a $2,000 scholarship for their work both on and off the court. This is something Farm Bureau and the MHSA have done for 33 years now. We're approaching $1 million in total scholarship money handed out over the life of the program. 
To be eligible, student athletes must have a 3.5 grade point average, earned at least one varsity letter in an MHSA sponsored sport, and fill out an application which includes an essay about the importance of sportsmanship in educational athletics. The application deadline is December 3rd. For more information, go to MHSA.com and to apply, check with your high school athletic director. And we are back in the Coliseum of Lake Orion with a score of 10 to 10. Ritt is being subbed back in along with Morrow. Groves made a bunch of changes. Ritt into Harvilla. So Terramino twins would say that's a um, wholesale checking in for the Falcons there. Harvilla working down three, passes out to Ritt. Everill trying to establish the offense. Passes out to Murrow, the sharpshooter. What a game Murrow had last Friday, though. One of the big reasons the Dragons were able to make that comeback. Had a career high. I believe he had 25 that night against the, against the Colts of Troy. Out to Ritt. Ritt. Ball stolen as Steele dribbles up the court, trying to slow everything down. Abbott tries to put up a shot, won't go. Student section loves it. Steel going to call a foul on Trevor Witt. Staying on the floor. Student section not loving it. I was about to say the same thing. One Dubose strikes back into the game. Gets a lovely Dubose greeting from the student section there. Never going to be able to let down that air ball he had earlier in the game. Never. As Liddell checks back into the game for Witt. Got some green men sitting in the student section tonight. Showing Cushman out. Trying to pass the ball around. Back to DeBose. DeBose tries to drive in. Blocked by Tobe. Steel can't get it back out. Rebound Alden as he dribbles up the court. Great rebound by Tub. Out to Ritt. Ritt dribbling around. Goes in. Tries to put up the shot. Won't go. Gets his own interception. Puts it back up. And two for Alden Ritt. Great, great possession there by Alden Ritt to be able to stay with it and just get the shot off and make an easy basket. Cushman out to Abbott. Abbott dribbling around Tobe. Trying to at least. Abbott gets in the bucket, gets the ball stolen from the student section's electric. Ritt trying to calm everyone down, coming back up the court. Dell trying to establish the offense. Out to Ritt. Out to DJ. DJ trying to get around zero. They're going to call. Call a foul on number zero. 12 CJ Wade comes back into the game for the Dragons. Strand will be subbing back in. Subbing in for Steele. Inbounds the ball to Hyvrilla. Hyvrilla trying to get around. Adele trying to get physical down deep. Won't go though. Like that find from Hyvrilla there to get it down low to Liddell trying to get some contact down there and get Liddell possibly back to the line. Morrow almost knocked that one away. 
Uh, bit dribbling around, trying to get around CJ. Zero drives in for the basket, and he'll have, oh, he'll miss the shot though. An easy wide open chance for points right there, and he will miss it. Rick trying to get around spin, but the ball is stolen from him. Zero on a fast break, puts up the shot and makes up for the one he just missed a little bit ago. Trevor Witt about to check in for the Dragons at the next dead ball. I imagine he comes in either for CJ or Blake. 12-12 about halfway through the second quarter here. Avrilla out to Ritt, Ritt from three, and boom! Third three-pointer of the night for Alden. And I think all three have been nothing but nets so far. CJ Wade called it. He said it was going to be a breakout game for Ritt there. He's Looking been doubting like himself so a little bit. Great to see his shot coming back to him. Fishman passes out to Abbott. Abbott to DeBose. DeBose trying to get around. Great defense by DJ. Out to Strand. Oh, they're going to call a foul on CJ. Derek, I got to say, I'm not, not too sure about that call. That seemed like ball to me. That's going to be called all the time in high school, even at the college level. Just when you go up over a guy's back, you're going to get that foul call. I like that foul from CJ, CJ there, making them earn it from the free throw line versus getting, giving them an easy field goal. It's going to be hard to earn it with this student section. Strand, first one will go. 23, Gabe Scott, 24... Trev, Trevor Witt comes into the game for the Dragons. 22 steal and 13. Roman coming into the game for the Falcons. Last season Gabe Scott's had for the varsity team. He's a five-quarter player right now. He's been up and down. It's great to see. Great to see the younger, younger uh, people. But going back to my point about C.J. Witt, though, if he didn't commit that foul and contest that shot, that's two points versus one point. That's a that's a one-point game versus a two-point game. Different That's a smart team. foul there by Witt. Strand gets it down low to Steele. Steele trying to get around Trevor. Strand trying to get around CJ. Puts up a layup. Won't go. Rebound Steele. And they're going to call a foul on the floor, though. That's Trevor Wood's second, team's fourth. It's going to be an inbound baseline. Roman for the inbound. Roman out to DeBose. DeBose trying to get in. Puts up a shot. Will get it stolen from him. Gabe Scott, the freshman, trying to get around DeBose. Pass the ball out to DJ. Dribbling in. Step back. Just a little short. It's a shot DJ can make there, Alec. That's a smart shot there. DeBose up front, establishing the offense. DeBose drives in, and they're going to call for a charging on DeBose. Great play by Liddell. Five Ritt and one have really come back into the game as it's going to be a 30 second timeout by the Dragons. Thank you to Orient Neighborhood Television and Dragon Broadcasting. You can watch LOHS sports and events all year. That includes all varsity basketball games this winter, along with some hockey, competitive cheer, concerts, and more. It costs less than $11 per month to watch sporting events, and nearly half the subscription money goes back to our LOHS program. Tune in online at www.dragonbroadcasting.org. As looking at this Dragons team, what a fight they've had in them up to going late into the second quarter. This is a team that lost by double digits against Groves earlier this year. Sorry, they lost by nine points. They lost 52 to 41. But this is a team that has had to overcome a lot of adversity this year. They started two and four, had a three or four game losing streak, had their head coach step down, Jose Andrade took over. But from there, they've went on to win 11 out of 13, just snapped a three game winning streak on Tuesday. Coming tenacious, that's one word I got used to describe the Dragons this year, is tenacious. 
Falcons seem to be starting to run a bit of a press defense as the half runs down. Falcons are going to run that defense that's aggressive. They're going to be in your face. They're going to force you to beat yourself offensively. Dragons need to control the ball, run their offense, run it like they know how to run it. Oh, I'd go, like to see Alden, Alden puts up the three. There. Just a little too much on that one as DeBose gets the rebound. I would have liked to see Liddell take that shot versus pass it there on that kick out. DeBose tries to put up the floater and it won't go. Rebound steal, puts up the shot, won't go. Gets his, Ricardo Villa gets the rebound as CJ races down the court right next to him. He drives in, puts up the layup, and boom. First point to have Villa tonight. He's playing a great game. He's showing himself. He's showing why he deserves that starting spot as soon as Malachi, unfortunately, leaves the Lake Orion. Granberry's expected to come back for districts. They're calling it a right ankle and a hip injury. I was talking to Granberry about it yesterday. He said, as that was a foul on Ritt, I was talking to Granberry about it yesterday, and he was just talking about how if it was the ankle, he'd be able to play today. But since it's the ankle and hip, that's what's keeping him sideline precautionary measures. They're Don't want to get more injured before playoffs. They're going to have him back for districts, though. But Havrilla, this is his second career start on varsity. He had a start earlier this year against Stony Creek in Stony Creek. He's a really good point guard, and he's one of the bright spots for the Dragons' future. Absolutely. DeBose puts up a three. Won't go. Rebound, Havrilla. CJ gets it out to Ritt. Ritt trying to find some space against Strand. Ritt out to Havrilla. Havrilla trying to drive in, puts up the floater, won't go. Rebound steal. That's where having Granberry is going to help Havrilla, just being able to have that confidence to take it and drive in there. Absolutely. And, and draw that'll contact. And fall for steal. 30 seconds left. Dragons up by two. Got to get that final shot off for the Dragons. CJ drives in. And it'll fall after rowing around the rim. Great play by CJ right there. 10 seconds left. Falcons aren't going to give the Dragons another shot. They're just going to try and take the time, put up the last shot for themselves. DeBose has to put up the shot. Wasn't thinking. Just a little too much. Close to going in, though. And that'll be the half for Lake Orion Dragons basketball. At the half, the Dragons are up by four, 19 to 15. We will see you back here in a little bit. The 2022 Basketball Finals will be at the Breslin Center March 19th for the girls, March 26th for the boys. Let's look back to see how last year's champions were crowned. Starting with the girls in Division I, Hudsonville beat Detroit Renaissance 65-61. Extra pass. J.C. Tubergen, one more time, and it's Hudsonville who hangs on, 65-61. In Division Two, Portland beat Nuevo, 52-32. Years. Densmore with the clock swing down, beats the buzzer, and gives Portland an eight-point lead as they go to the locker room. Might not be done here. Guilford has been outstanding. 14 points. Extra pass. Bauer hits. Absolutely how explosive they are. And that's going to do it. In a season unlike any other, for the first time ever, the Portland Raiders, state champs in girls basketball. In Division Three, it was Grass Lake 52, Kent City 50. No good for Gears. Margusser ahead of the pack again, and it falls in. She's like a one-person break. How many times has she been out ahead of the field? Kansas City, a lot of credit, because their defense really stepped up, and they seized that opportunity. 
Avery Cabana, one of the biggest shots of her life. Music to Warriors fans' ears for the first time in school history. Grass Lake State Champions. And in Division Four, Fowler beat Bel Air 54-20. Because they've been very present to challenge a lot of those shots at the front of the room. Mia Riley, she has scored the last eight points for the Eagles. Might have got a little hand in there. But as it were, Fowler basketball and a beautiful stroke from Avery Koenigsnack. How about this? The Fowler Lady Eagles on the 30th anniversary of the school's first and only state championship back in 1991 have done it again. On the boys' side in Division I, Grand Blank 45, Ann Arbor Huron 36. How about R.J. Taylor from the corner? Scratch that. That is Josh Recksteiner. Saved by Edmondson. But who's going to get to it? It's Grand Blank. And off the window, Amante Allen Johnson. Champions in Division I, the Grand Blank Bobcats. In Division II, Grand Rapids Catholic Central beat Battle Creek Penfield 77-54. Brown has been hitting the turbo all day. Drive and kick, Brooks hits. What a great idea. If you don't like playing against a good defensive team like Penfield, hit before they even set up. Under five and a half to go. Karasinski, no doubt about it. They're not just a football school for the first time in school history. They're champs in hoops. In Division Three, Flint Beecher beat Iron Mountain 75 47. Pull it out if we want, guys. We got this double digit lead. No lead to uh, put pressure on ourselves here. Nenefield stepping back. Oh my goodness! Another steal. Nenefield. Scooping one home. Congratulations to Mike Williams and the Flint Beecher Bucks. They do it again. 17 years for Williams. This is his sixth title. Really good ball club. And in D4, Detroit Douglas, 47. Wyoming Tri-Unity Christian, 41. Holding up from the logo. Whoa! Holy cow! Bombs away to end the half and take a lead. And Douglas stretching that lead. Now to seven points in the steal. Look out! Do you know the biggest difference between a pickup game and organized high school sports? The answer is obvious, it's officials. School sports is more than just kicking a ball or running fast. They're an extension of a student's education and the classroom. An official can help teach the importance of following the rules, impartiality, and most importantly, fairness. Captain of the football team, correct? Yes, sir. Represents yes, sir. leadership and sportsmanship, right? You guys set the good examples for your fellow teammates, okay? All right, we have a problem with one of your fellow teammates, we'll come and ask you to take care of the problem, okay? But the need for officials has never been greater. There are some benefits to becoming an official, like staying in shape, staying involved in the sports you played as a young person, networking, and of course, you can earn some pretty good extra money while doing all of that. It's easy to sign up. Just go to mhsaa.com slash officials and click register now. Now is a great time for you to get involved in your community and give something back to our kids. There's help wanted, we need you to whistle. For more information, visit our website at mhsaa.com. We're there to serve, make sure we're creating a fair atmosphere for both teams, upholding the integrity of the game. I chose to be an official. It's the best decision I've made. In life, things aren't scripted. Games aren't pre-scripted. 
You know, I got into officiating because my father was an official. Officiating was part of our family life. It wasn't just the game. You get to be outside, you get to like experience the game. It's so much more fun. You can get a lot out of it. If you're an athlete, we need people like you and translate those skills to officiating. It helped me become not only a better official, but a better person. It happens in every town, in every game. We never have a perfect game, but the rewards always outweigh the negativities. And it's just been wonderful. Today, we'd like to talk to you about the MHSAA's Legacy Officiating Program. The Legacy Officials Program gives high school students their first taste of officiating, helping them literally earn their stripes working junior high, middle school, and sub-varsity contests. All Legacy Officials have a local sponsor, a mentor, a veteran official who helps arrange games and observes and critiques their work. Legacy officials learn about the time it takes to study, practice, improve their officiating skills, and about the time commitment their adult counterparts put into their work. The program helps them better understand the rules of the game, the role of officials, and the importance of sportsmanship. It's also not a bad way for a high school kid to earn a little money. Every year, legacy officials are honored at the MHSAA's annual Officials Awards and Alumni Banquet, where one graduating senior is awarded a modest college scholarship. Since its inception, nearly 2,000 students have taken part in the legacy program, with between 100 and 150 participants in any given year, and we can always use more. To learn more about the MHSAA's legacy officiating program, or to become a game official, visit MHSAA.com. There's help on it, just whistle. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Coliseum of Lake Orion High School as Lake Orion takes on Groves with a score of 19 to 15 Lake Orion right now. So far it's been a great defensive game as the offense hasn't been able to do much against that defense but hopefully we see a change in the second half and Lake Orion can just boom away with this game. Yeah, you're totally right. It's been a defensive battle so far, and leading scorer for both teams has been Ritt with 11. Roman has six to lead the way for the Falcons, but it's just been a really defensive battle, and it's been, like I said earlier tonight, this game's going to be defined by who wins, who makes less mistakes, and who has a better game at the free throw line. The Dragons haven't been the best free throw shooting team yet this year. Something we've seen kind of get better as they have gone along with this season. But that's probably the biggest question mark going into the season is how are they going to be able to shoot from the free throw line? Yes, it is. And because the leading scorer for Groves is only six, they've really been spreading the ball out well with scoring. Whereas like Orion Alden, and obviously we knew he was going to have a great game because he always does. But let's see if he continues it. Both dribbles the ball up. Good defense by Liddell right there. Interesting decision by Coach Andradas having DJ Morrow out on the court instead of Trevor Witt. Both of us were surprised when we found out Trevor was starting over DJ today. Well, like we said, the defense has been really good, so maybe they're trying to get that offense going with DJ. It's a very viable possibility. Steele tries to get around three people, passes out to Williams. Williams blocked by Alden. We'll be going back with Groves. Go ahead. Out to Saran. Saran with the three to bring them within one. Got Dragon alumni in the crowd tonight. Former big man for the Dragons basketball team, Nate Talbot, taking in Dragons game. Spring break for him from Wayne State. It's awesome to see your alumni come back to the alma mater. We've seen Drew Van Heck this year. Jack Cummins has come to a couple of games. Everyone trying to get deep. 
Goes out and will be blocked by Steele. Big height advantage for Steele there. Not much you can do about that if you're Hevrilla. I think that student section just continues to increase. Slowly but surely. Something they like to see if you're the Dragons. Absolutely. Nate. What Ritt a shot there puts by up the shot. Gives him 13 on the night for Ritt. Bos getting the offense, pass out Strand, Strand out to Roman. Something I'm surprised to see on the scorebook for the Dragons so far tonight, Liddell only has two points, Won't both go. of which have been free throws in the first quarter. Follows on Liddell. On Liddell. Williams drives down deep, gets the ball to Steele. Steele with an easy layup for two. It's going to be six points on the night for Steele now. Quick. I like the matchup between Ritt and Steele. I mean, not going to get much better than that. It's a matchup that might only be overdone by Dubose and Ritt. That was earlier in the game. Ritt as his three and will be fouled by Steele. Important shots right here for important shots right here for Ritt. This can be three points he can add on. Got to get the free throws down though. Never mind. The call will be changed as a foul will be on the floor. They're not sure why Groves is clapping. They still fouled them. Twenty-four Witt comes into the game. That's Trevor Witt. I guess they'll be moving DJ to a point guard then. Probably, I'd imagine. Prev has CJ at shooting guard. Alden small forward. CJ gets a shot and boom! They don't need those free throws as CJ comes back with two points right there. CJ with a quiet six points on the night for the Dragons. He's really played his roll well for the Dragons tonight. Strand down to steal low. The ball gets stolen by DJ. CJ picks it up. CJ running down the court. It's a reminder what's at stake. Dragons win here. They're guaranteed a share of the OAA white title. Trying to win league titles back to back years. Won the OAA blue last year. A Lake Orion win plus a Bloomfield Hills loss to Stony Creek will guarantee Lake Orion the title outright. Ritt trying to get around his player. Passes out to Trevor. Student section wants Trevor to shoot it, but he knows he's not an outside shooter. Trevor Witt, he plays his role really well for the Dragons. He's that big man, that bully down low. He's going to play lockdown defense for you. That's what's going to get him his minutes on the court. Gets the ball to Ritt. That one was intended for his brother, CJ. Long possession here for the Dragons. As he gets steel jumping, drives in, puts up the shot, and boom! What a play by Alden. Student section definitely loved that one as they tried to go and high five him. Tried to help Ritt up as he hit the deck there. Roman puts up another three, and that one is in and out. Rebound will be a jump ball. Great effort by both Trevor and Alden right there. I don't think Trevor's happy about something there just by the look on his face. As Havrela comes back into the game for the Dragons. Checking in for Blake. Blake seems upset about something. Off night for Liddell tonight. Still got a whole lot of game left. Maybe he can turn it around. 
So refs are checking. I believe they're checking for a wet, wet spot on the floor. As that was Steele and Witt who hit the deck right at that spot. They're checking out for the jump ball. Ritt will inbound the ball to CJ. Press defense didn't work too good right there as they will foul him to the floor. Foul is on Abbott, his first, team's second of the half. It's gonna be Morrow to inbound it right in front of the scorer's table. Rebounds it to Rip. Ritt gets well blocked by Strand. Oh no, they're gonna give it a foul on Strand on the shot. Don't see where they saw the foul. Maybe he got a little bit more of his hand than he wanted to. That looked to be Strand all ball for me. Doesn't like it. Ritt shooting two, first free throws of the night for Alden Ritt. Tobe getting ready to check in. Ritt will make the first one with ease. That's Tobe coming into the game. Checking in for CJ. Got some Pistons action. They're beating the Toronto Raptors 31 to 22 right now. No, Anthony Schulte's happy about that one. Going to hear about that if they pull off the victory tonight in class tomorrow. Absolutely. Rip for his second shot. And that will go in and out. I think that was off steal, but refs apparently saw something else. As the ball will be going Groves way. Cheer Rhett, Rick coaching CJ when he's on the bench there. I imagine CJ said something to the refs that Rick did not like. Rick's that leader, leader on and off the court. Absolutely. There's a reason Rick got named the captain this year for the Dragons. He did well deserved, well deserved. Not only does he lead in points, but just he helps the team in every way possible. It's been a couple instances where he was the one to keep his teammates in the game. Steele puts up the shot, a little too much on that one. Rebound Havrilla. Havrilla trying to dribble around Abbott as he goes behind the back. Setting up the offense now is Havrilla. Just over three minutes left. Dragons lead this one 26-20. Trying to win the at least a share of the OAA White. Be the second Trevor year. goes out tough, but will be blocked by Steele. But they will be calling a foul on Steele, sending Trevor to the line. Coaches of Groves don't like it. Groves don't like it. But the student section, however, they Groves love Scott's it. Groves got to watch it. He's right at half court. Russ could tee him up right now if they wanted to. That side judge right there, the sideline ref is right there, probably about 20 feet from him. He starts heading over back to his side of the bench. CJ's first shot will go in. As CJ subs in for Tobe. Falcons made substitution for Williams. That last foul on Steele was his third of the night. We've talked a lot about free throw shooting for the Dragons. They've missed one free throw tonight. It was Rick who missed his second free throw. That will be two as he tries to get his own rebound. Announcer's jinx. Announcer's jinx, that's what that was right there. As Liddell comes back into the game. Coming in for Trevor. Trevor getting it out. Third foul of the night on Rick there. The Bo's going against CJ. Blocked by CJ, crowd loves it. Strand tries to drive in, goes against two, and will be fouled. Be, that one is gonna be on CJ. Second of the night on T CJ. That will go in. A little bit of a lucky bounce right there. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Sometimes. 
Roman will check in for DeBose as they move back. Strand will miss the second one, but Steele will get the rebound, resetting the offense out to Roman. What a catch by Strand right there. They're going to get Liddell in the post, I believe. Yep, on a hold. He's third on Liddell. I don't know what's happened with him tonight. Usually he's on point. Off night. Or you get a player like Steele. That's going to happen as Witt checks in the game for him. Everybody has an off night. He'll get it together. There's no need to panic. Abbott inbound, or er, Roman inbounds the ball to Abbott as he puts up the floater. Rebound CJ over Steele. Pass out to Havrilla. Lose the ball. Manages to get it back though. DJ dumps the ball off to Trevor. Trevor out to Allen trying to make some space. Can't get it though. I really think that's something when you know Alden Ritz is off. When he had that one-on-one -on -one there, his eyes are normally up towards the basket, seeing if he could make that three-point shot there. Oh. His eyes were down. Trevor almost had a point of it and one there, but he will still be going to the line. That's um, Amir Tron's foul. That's his third. Trevor, first shot, will go. 42, Josh Gibson checks into the game for the Falcons. Freshman. I was about to say, he was a freshman he for the freshman. Falcons. Tobe checks into the game for Havrilla. See if this freshman can do anything. As Trevor goes for his second shot. Tobe's a sophomore for the Dragons. Dragons have a lot of young talent. And that will be another one for Trevor. Goes two for two at the line. Freshman brings the ball up. Brings the ball up. Gibson passes out to Roman. Gibson puts up a shot and it will go. Already making an impact. CJ brings the ball up the court, dumps it off to Rip. Rip puts up a shot, a little to the right. Rebound Trevor. And he will be tripped by Steele. Falcons will make a substitute in for Strand. Adele will come in for Trevor. That was Steele's second, fourth foul of the game. Keeping him in though. As Groves will call a timeout. Full timeout. Stay up to date with Dragon Broadcasting on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Visit our website at www.dragonbroadcasting.org and drop us an email at dragonbroadcasting at lok12.org. We welcome your feedback. With under a minute left, do you think that either of these teams will be trying to come up with some sort of play to maybe get the last score in or maybe just keep the score as is? I imagine Groves is going to try and get two or three possessions out of this. They're going to really play that up-in-your-face defense that's going to try and force the Dragons to make a turnover, to make a bad decision, 
and then they're just going to be quick on the offensive side. They're going to try and find something that's going to get them quick baskets, quick looks at the baskets, quick three-pointers. I imagine there's going to be a lot of movement for them, just trying to find something open. They need something to spark them before going into this fourth quarter where they're going to need to start playing. This game has still been a defensive strong game as the score is only 29-23, still in Lake Orion's favor. But the defense tonight has just been amazing as Groves will make a bunch of subs. And Lake Orion will sub in Havrilla. Dragons trying to break a three-game losing streak against Groves. Their last win was March 3rd of 2016. Groves has won the last three against the Dragons. Haven't had much opportunities to play it if they've only played three times since 2016. Yeah, no kidding. Ritt gets it to Havrilla. Havrilla tries to get it around, won't be able to. Out to Ritt. Ritt puts up the three, and boom, nothing but net for his fourth three-pointer of the game. What that's a game. How, that's how you know Ritt's on point. That's how you know he's starting to feel his nothing shot a little bit more. Nothing but four times tonight. Might not make all of them, but when he makes them, he makes them with style, that's for sure. Roman drives in, and nothing will be called on them. As they're trying to hurry up, CJ puts up the shot. Just a little too strong on that one. There's those football jeans for you, nothing but strength. After the third quarter, the score is 32-25, to 25, as we will see you back here in a little bit. Hello and welcome back to the Lake Orion Coliseum as Lake Orion currently leads Groves 32 to 25 going into the fourth quarter. Again, we say it's been a very defensively strong game. Maybe it can turn around in the fourth quarter as the offense has started to pick up, realizing they need to score some more points. Yeah, I really, I really expect Groves to be more aggressive. We talked about it at the end of the third quarter, getting a lot more movement, getting a lot more screams, a lot more picks, a lot more pop, pick and pops, just stuff to try and find open looks. The Dragons' defense, one of the big keys for them is make history. They're trying to make history when they OAA White, but one of the big things for them is defense by the committee. We've seen that really well for the Dragons tonight. That's why they're holding a really good Groves offense to 25 points. Student section is getting electric as the entire section is on their feet for this fourth quarter. First time in probably three or four years we've seen the student section on their feet. It's been a great week for student sections. We heard a chant from the student section last night saying defense. That is very impressive considering what it used to be. Good. Lake Orion on their feet. They want their team to win. They want it to go down as a great win. They're they going to be what's electric at stake. this last quarter. They know that they want their team to win the district one seed. They're getting excited. Everybody's getting excited. This place is electric. And let's see what the Dragons can do with it. It's going to be starting five on for the Dragons. Plus, Morrow instead of Witt once again. Trevor Witt. Abrillo passes down to Ritt. Ritt puts up a shot and will not get it. Gets his own rebound, though. Puts up the lid. I know the crowd right there wanted the dunk from Ritt. They wanted, they wanted a dunk there from their captain. They were going to go ecstatic if he was, but they still got the points. Can't complain about that. Groves will be keeping their star player steal out as he has three fouls, four fouls? Four fouls. Four fouls on tonight. Gibson will try and get around Havrilla. Won't be able to do it. Dumps the ball off into both. I expect Steele to check in probably about the three or four minute mark in the fourth quarter just to get him out there to try and make that last push. Speaking of push, there's a push on DJ Morrow that's going to be called as a foul. You, you see what I did there? Yeah. Put, push, push. A little, little pun right there as Williams will be checking in for the Falcons. No, no one laughed at that pun. I bet they were laughing at home. Gibson puts up the three, won't go. 
DJ with his own rebound, or with a rebound, not his own, obviously he didn't put up the shot. Got the Lake Orion swim team coming out to support the Dragons. Who wouldn't want to support them? Love the Dragons. Got the hockey team out there, got some football players, some lacrosse. Got all the sports supporting the Dragons. Of course, we got a very own baseball player here commentating. <laughs> As Rick will be fouled by DeBose. On the ground, but because they're in the bonus, it'll be a one and one for Alden. You know he wants to make these ones right here, and the student section's gonna happen. Ritz first shot, up, and good. That makes Ritz two for three on the night from the free throw line, 66%. Almost automatic, almost. Automatic Alden, it's his nickname. Ritz second shot, up and good. Two for two from the, from the free throw line right there as Trevor Witt will sub in for Alden. 23 points on the night for Ritt. We knew he had to have a great game, and he is having it. CJ Witt called it to me. He said Alden Ritt was going to have a breakout night tonight. Guess we got to ask him what's going to happen before every game. Maybe Alden Ritt, luck. so humble. He's such a team first player. You know who he said was going to have a breakout game? Nate Havrilla. We're hoping so, hoping so. As Trevor goes for the rebound. Maybe got away with a little something right there, but it will not go down as Havrilla drives up the court. Seems like a bit of a mismatch with Trevor Witt on Williams, but it's what they're going with. Williams has the height, I think, to guard Trevor Witt. The question is, is he going to be strong enough? Dell out to Trevor. Abbott trying to play some press defense as he will get a foul on Murrow. Don't know exactly what Abbott was thinking there. He's just giving Murrow some shots. But, I mean, we'll take it. First free throw attempts is going to come after a full Groves a timeout. Full timeout by Groves. Here are five good reasons for high school, high school multi sport participation fewer overuse injuries, less opportunity for emotional burnout, exposure to different kids and coaches, exposure to different roles, and learning to compete better. Being a multi-sport participant can help the kid become a more well-rounded person. Multi-sport multi participation is cross-training for life. Learn more at the MHSAA website. Starting to seem like Groves might, or Pete might. The game still got a lot of time left, but they are falling from what they were at. Defense is starting to let down. I think it's those fouls though. They are at eight fouls right now with their star player Steele being out because of foul trouble. I don't know, but it seems like it's getting to them. It's really, I, I think Groves needs a quick basket just to get on a quick run, take the crowd out of it, and just get the momentum back on their side. The Dragons have all the momentum right now. Crowd, get quick basket, get the crowd, especially the student section out of it. Crowd is a big part of the game right now. They are still standing from the beginning of this quarter. You hear, you hear about it in professional sports. It's just as true in home sports. That home court advantage that's going to play true, and we've seen it playing true tonight. And that one does not rebound rattle Rebound by Trevor, great rebound, as they will be double teaming him. Timeout Dragons, 30 second timeout. As if you're Coach Andradis right now, what are you saying in the huddle to your team up 11 points? I think you're saying you gotta start locking down on defense. You do have the lead. However, you can't stop on the gas pedal. You got to keep going. You got to keep trying to score. But I feel like the most important part right now is making sure that Groves does not catch up. They cannot have a start that just starts to get to them. Now, Groves, they might be saying the exact opposite. They're saying, we need to play defense too, but we need to focus, focus more importantly on getting better at that offense, catching up, and scoring a bunch of baskets. One of the biggest questions for the, each team this night tonight is, how are they going to overcome having a star out for the Dragons at Scranberry for the Groves it's having Lurks out? I really think the Dragons have overcome that really well. It's the Falcons that have just really seemed stagnant on offense without having that key player that they run their offense through. Absolutely. 
And it's going to be Liddell out on the court. He has three fouls on the night. They will be double teaming Ritt. Like I said, that defense is going to start coming in for Groves. Murrow gets the ball out to Havrilla. Tries to drive in out to Liddell. That will be out of bounds on Roman. Going Lake Orion ball. I really expect the Falcons to pay a lot more attention to Ritt, especially down the stretch. They're going to put their best to. defender on them. It's, okay, beat us with someone other than that's not wearing number five. That's what the Colts did really well against the Dragons. Both times they played them is they held Ritt to 11 points last Friday. As you once again see the double team, that's going to turn into a defensive foul. That will be called on DeBose, sending Ritt once again to the line. I don't know what they're thinking, sending Ritt back to the line. He is three for four tonight. If you think they're going to foul somebody, they would foul somebody else. DeBose, that's his third foul of the night. As Groves will be sending in their two top players, Steele and Strand. Apparently they're no longer worried about Steele's fouls as they need to start coming back. Strahan has three fouls of his own. Trevor. Both of those key players in foul trouble for them, including the Bows. Ritz, first three, or three, three. Can't free talk. throw. There, that's the one. Will be good as he is now four for five. P announcer Roger Smith says he hit the bonus. Second free throw will be good. Five for six. The boast will be dribbling as CJ sprints back to the back court. The boast down low to Strand. Strand out to Abbott. Abbott's three. No good. Rebound Ritt over Roman. Out to Liddell. Liddell's got to get to a guard. Ritt trying to get around Roman as he gets double teamed eventually. Trevor wide open. And that'll be two for Trevor as Steele cannot foul, not allowing him to do anything. Thought for a split second, Whip might have went into a dunk there to get the crowd going. He decided with the safer option the layup. Steele will fumble the ball, but will eventually get it back, but won't be able to make it as Whit gets the rebound. So you're saying you think Trevor can dunk? I think I think Whit has the hops. He has the height. I've seen CJ dunk in warm-ups before. I have not seen Trevor dunk yet, though. I mean, with those knee pads, I don't know, man. DJ trying to break the press. That will be a foul on Strand. They are once again sending Alden to the three free throw line. What are they thinking? You cannot foul Alden. Stop number five. Of course, the Lake Orion, they love it. They're telling him, keep fouling, keep fouling him. But Groves, I, I don't know what's going through their mind right now. That's Ron's fourth foul. Both of your post players are in foul trouble with four fouls. Something to keep an eye on for the Falcons. As Ritz first shot. Won't be good this time. But they are in the double bonus, meaning he'll get two guaranteed. Havrill will be subbing in for Trevor. Ritt lines up for his second shot. And that one will be good. If you send Ritt to the line, it's almost a guaranteed one point. Almost. Steele puts up the shot. Won't go either. What a rebound by Ritt. A little one-hand grab right there. Ritt went to the high point. Out to Liddell. Liddell down to Ritt. Something interesting about the Falcons, they've scored two points this whole fourth quarter. As there's a up a and pass. under by Morrow for the two points. The only two points by the Falcons so far in the fourth quarter has been by DuBose. Said it was that lockdown defense as Abbott puts up the three, won't go. Rebound by DuBose. He puts it back up, won't go. Steele tries to get the rebound, won't go as DJ comes away with it. I think DuBose wanted a foul there as he hit the deck. Who doesn't want a foul? Fair enough. Liddell trying to get out of the boat, won't be able to as DeBose grabs the ball. CJ will be called for a foul. Gibson will be checking in the game for Steele as they are taking him out, what I can only assume is because of foul trouble. CJ Witt, that was his third foul, team six. One more foul to give before the Falcons will be shooting free throws. With three minutes left. Can't be a good thing. Gibson. 
Wanted Ooh. to travel there. Uh, as he eventually airballs, now I think that is. CJ out to Murrow. Murrow spin, almost had it. Ritt out for three, won't go. Student session was ecstatic for that one. That was a nice spin move there by Morrow to get the for that kick out to out to Ritt. Would have been. Oh, absolutely rejected by Blake. Student section loves it. Everybody loves it. Once again, height advantage went to Blake. He had a good advantage on that one. You know who the first teammate there was to high five him though? The captain Alden Ritt. That just oh, shows course. that leadership, that teammate in him. He's probably one of the most coachable players on the team this year. I saw him, or I was able to talk to him after the Bloomfield Hills loss, and he just talked about being able to forget Tuesday and how Andrade talked about them, saying their goals are still in front of them. They need to learn from that loss and just forget about it. It's in the rear view, rear view window. Rear view mirror. Same yeah. thing. Same thing. Potato, potato. Abbott puts up the layup. That one will go for him. Adele out to Ritt as Debose is guarding him on the press, trying to pass their way through it. Adele gets it out to Havrilla, pass the thing. That, the Ritt dribbles in, Euro, and boom! Two points for Ritt right there. Bench loves it. And we have it. We a have a chance. From the student section. We have a chance. Abbott will make the three, but more importantly, there was a chant from the student section. They're loving it. Avril gets it to CJ. Britt will eventually bring it up the court. Spin move. CJ out to Havrilla. That chant did not last too long, unfortunately. That 29, that's 29 points for Ritt on the season. Oh, he's got to get 30. I believe that's a new career high. CJ drives in. Out to Havrilla. Get it to Ritt. He's got to get 30. He's got to get 30. And they are going to call Ritt for travel. a travel on that one. Definitely moved, but he looked like he wanted a travel. Creed men are still in the student section. They've gone down to one, though. Court. Gibson passes to out to. No, passed up the blonde. My apologies. Has to be hot in that green costume all game long. Got to support the team though. Fair enough. As CJ claps right and gets in space. Stolen by Liddell. CJ is eventually getting the ball. CJ dribbles up the court. We know who the, you want Double the ball team. to go to. Havrilla gets it to DJ. DJ passes back to CJ. And they're going to foul it. With 29 points, he makes one of these. He will have 30 points on the game, on the game tonight. Follows on Gibson his first. Ritt will have two from the line. Two chances to get 30. He knows it himself as he is clapping it up right now. 24 weight comes into the game. And 21 toe. And number 11, Miles McClary will be coming in for Groves. Student section knows it. Alden knows it. With just under a minute. A Lake Orient team. Unless a miracle on ice happens. That's they 30. Have this game. But that is 30 for Alden Ritt. What a game by him. We knew, we said it in the beginning. We said he has to have a great game, step up for Malachi, and he absolutely did it. 31 for Alden Ritt. What a game. Tushman will He's almost the outscored ball. the whole Falcons team who has 32. That yeah, pretty impressive. Ball to Tushman, the sophomore, puts up a shot. Won't go. Rebound by Murrow. As Gibson, they're just trying to foul now, or they're trying to get the ball. And they will be called a foul on Gibson. Murrow's going to go to the line shooting too. Thirty seconds left in this game. Fifteen point lead for the Dragons. Great game. As Alden. Great team win. Great team win tonight by the Dragons. Alden looks like he may be coming out for the game. 
after a 31-point performance by Alden Ritt. Bunch of love from the coaches as this will be his last home regular season game in a Dragons uniform, and he absolutely showed out. What a performance. Liddell will be checking in. Liddell in for Trevor. As for Trevor as a senior, this will also be his last regular season home game. He is getting a whole bunch of love for it. Just listen to that student section right now for the Dragons, though, giving the love to Witt. Out to Abbott. Abbott puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound Gibson. Gibson tries, puts up the shot, and manages to somehow get that. Right. Best move there by Gibson. That, that was impressive. Gibson puts up the three. Won't go as an air ball happens. Out to Blunt. Blunt blocked by Liddell. Rebound by Tobe. As they will let the time run out as the Lake Orion Dragons gritty their way into a win against Rose. More importantly, they gritty their self into the OAA White title. That is right, folks. The Lake Orion Dragons are the OAA White title champions. They are guaranteed at least a share of the title. We are still waiting for the final score Maybe from the Bloomfield up. Hills game. Bloomfield Hill lost, and they will be the number one. So hopefully they lose. Not going to be mean, but obviously we want them to lose. Thank you for watching this presentation of Dragon Sports. Today's game is a copyrighted presentation of Lake Orion High School's Dragon Broadcasting and Orion Neighborhood Television. Once again, the final score of tonight's game, 49-34 Dragons. On behalf of our entire broadcast crew, I'm Jack Hagerberg. This is Derek Steele. Loving the student section. So long, everybody. Have a good night.